Isn't it ridiculous that I literally almost forgot to record? Okay, you guys, this is a surface area of 108 meters. And by meters, I mean square inches. So take that. We're already off to a great start. Um, so open box with a square base. So square base would suggest... I added it. I just said that the surface area. All right. All right. And you guys, um, do we see the open box here? And I'm going to call that height Y because we don't know what it is. All right. So. We have kind of have two things going on here. We have surface area and we have volume. <coughs> now, which one of these do we want to come up with an expression for first? Volume? Okay. Um, what is the volume? <coughs> I'm sorry? X times X times Y, uh, uh, X times X times y which I'm going to call X squared Y. We good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about the surface area? So the surface area would be we add up the area of all the surfaces. So first of all, how many surfaces do I have? Five, because it's an open box. It's an open box, so it doesn't have a top. Okay, okay so we have the bottom, and then we have the four sides, yeah? Yes. What's the area of the bottom? X times X. X squared, great. What about the area of the sides? X times Y. They're, they're X times Y, and they're all the same, yeah? Yes. So um, are you guys cool if I call that 4XY? Yeah. Okay, great. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Emphasizing on trying, I guess. Mm -hmm. Trying to make a joke. Sure. You guys, there's one more piece of information we haven't quite used yet. The, uh, we know that the result, the surface area can't be bigger than 108 square inches. Okay, now, the question we want to do is find the maximum volume. So we need to find the maximum of the volume expression. Right now, that's very challenging to do because two variables. Yes. Okay, so we want to rewrite this as a function of x by get, figuring out, well, what is y as a function of x? So can I, can I get the y by itself in this one to tell me what y is as a function of x? Okay, so uh, I would start with 108 minus x squared equals 4xy. Divide by the 4x. So now I can rewrite my volume as a function of x. So now if I want to find the maximum, I essentially need to find where does my derivative switch from positive, positive to negative. Cool? So now, if I were you guys, I would rewrite this as uh, 1 fourth times 108x minus x cubed because this x in the denominator can cancel with the x out front. And that derivative sounds way better than, I guess you wouldn't have to, but I would. But what do I know? 
Everybody good? Yep. Okay, so, and then I might even, like, one-fourth times um, 180, I think is 27. And now I might take my derivative. I just think that's a much easier derivative to take. Yeah? 27 minus 3, 4, 6, 1. How'd I do? Thanks. Now what? What are we trying to do? We're trying to find where the derivative changes from positive, positive to positive. negative. So we need to find the zeros of this. So we can see where does it switch between positive and negative. Or also known as find the critical values. I'm going to make you guys do that. You guys, what does X stand for again? X stands for Okay, so <laughs> X, in this whole question, in the context of this question, X is the length of the, of the base, yeah. of that square base. So even though we, we've got X equals 6 and X equals negative 6, six. we really just have X equals 6. Because x can't be negative, yeah? We're all comfortable that x has to be a positive number of some kind. So even though it's in the domain, negative 6 is in the domain of my volume function, it's not in the domain of this context. Correct. Great. All right, so just double check here. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I can't draw that arrow there because x has to, can't be bigger than 0, or it can't be smaller than 0. And all I need to show is that the thingy, that the derivative changes sign here. The thingy. The thingy. So if I plug in a small number for x into, where am I plugging it into? The derivative. The derivative I would plug into it here. <coughs> Oh, no, no, no. I would plug into it here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. I'm going to plug in 4 because it's easiest. Yeah. 15. What is positive? Oh, Which means increasing. Yep. And then if I plug in... 8, it'll be negative, yep. decreasing. Great. That's what we want, right? The, so volume is maximized at x equals 6. Nice. You would have definitely done this last year. Some versions of optimization. So in other words, these are word optimization means we're finding we're doing word problems that have to do with finding maxes and mins. That's it. Word problems with maxes and mins. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this would not get you full credit. Does anybody want to say why this would not get you full credit? Why? Yeah, we did it. The question said find the dimensions. Yeah. So. So, yeah, so we're going to do, well, we know that y is equal to 108 minus um, x squared over 4x. Yeah, so we just plug in 6. 
Yeah. Alright. I think you get three. Okay, so if I'm asking what are the dimensions, I would expect to see six inches by six inches by three inches as your final answer. And this is your supporting evidence to get there. Right. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Here's a good one. Let's look at this one. Such a fun problem. Consider the equation 4 minus x squared. You guys, what does the graph y equals 4 minus x squared look like? Um, it's going to be like at point 0.4. It's going to be at point 0.4? No, at the point 0.4. The oh, the, the y-intercept would be 4. Okay. And then it's gonna be upside down. An upside down parabola? Yeah. Are we good with this? Okay. And um sorry. And then um we want to figure out where on this parabola is the closest to the point zero two. Well, where's the point zero two? <coughs> be like right here. So for right now, let's just make this arbitrary point here. I'm going to call it the point x, y, because we don't know its coordinates. That's the point we're trying to find. And then we have the point 0, 2. And the distance between those two is this distance, yeah? And so what we want to do is minimize the green line. So, like, if my point were down here, that would not be a minimized. That's definitely not the minimum, right? So, it's like we're trying to start to think through that minimum is somewhere in this general region, right? So, probably x is in between negative 2 and 2 at some point, but we want, we're going to be more precise, okay? All right, so what that means is in order to minimize distance, we have to come up with a function that is the distance between these two variables. And for right now, I'm just going to call it D, not D of X, okay? All right. Do you guys remember the distance formula? Or, frankly, the Pythagorean theorem? Because they're the same thing. So, A No, it is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The distance is the c squared, so if I want just the distance, I need to take the square root of it. My a squared is the difference between my two x coordinates, which in this case would be x minus 0. And my b squared is the distance between my y coordinates, which would be y minus 2. Now, yeah, that's it. Okay, we, you guys, this is, a, this is my equation, yeah? Right now, this expression is, only, is in terms of both x and y. I need it to only be in terms of x. So, well, I need it to only be in terms of one of them, but I happen to know that I could take this y out and put 4 minus x squared in. Everybody good? Wow. Okay, so d as a function of x would be the square root of x squared plus four minus x squared minus two, the quantity squared. Now, what do you guys want to do from here? Do you want to take the derivative the way it's written right now? Probably not, 
To me, this derivative sounds pretty darn terrible. Okay, so what can we do? Probably the first thing I would do Two minus x squared <clears throat> squared. Can we distribute exponents through plus or minus? No. So you guys, we need to square two minus x squared. Figure out what that is. How'd I do? Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. This is the easiest way for me to see how to take the derivative, I think. Now we can find that derivative, yeah? Thoughts? What can we say about the denominator? Where is it undefined? Go ahead, poly smelt it. See what you get. Because as we're going through and we're trying to think of our critical values, just thinking back to, I don't know, a quiz that we took yesterday, some of us maybe, maybe forgot to check that critical <coughs> values also happen where a function is undefined. It caught a few people on the back page. It was not you. I actually don't remember. I, I graded the afternoon classes this morning, and I remember some of them did it. I can't remember. At least one of you guys did, but I can't remember who it is. Charlie only plugged zero. Yeah, that was definitely me. Stop rubbing my hand every time I stretch. <laughs> hey, you guys, where did you get that a poly smelt for this? I haven't poly smelt that yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nope. Well, we, we're going to, if you, I'm not going to let you poly smelt the top, just so you know. Uh, it's not happening. Whoa. Uh, Did you get all imaginary numbers? Yeah. 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 So what does that mean? There's no real number where the bottom yeah. equals zero. Yeah. So you're good. This is always okay. defined. That, that, that's what I'm like, I'm imaginary So that's good, right? Like, so poly smelt tells you where it's equal to all the, all the numbers where it's equal to zero. If none of those numbers are real numbers, great. Okay, 
So now we just need to figure out where does this function equal zero. So how do I figure out where does this function equal zero? Wherever 4x cubed minus 6x equals zero. Now what? I'm going to pull out a 2x. I love it when Michael gives me permission to do math. Phew, I have Michael's permission. We can proceed, guys. Okay, and then, uh, you know, what else are we seeing? So what does that mean? So x equals zero. And x equals? Plus or minus the square root of three halves. In this case, can x be both positive and negative? Like last time we crossed out yes, the negative. It can be. Okay. All right. So, how many of you guys feel good so far? So now we got to decide here's what happens. Some of these are minimum distances and some of these are maximum distances so the next thing is we're, we got to do that derivative test so we'll do negative square root of 3 over 2 0 positive square root of 3 over 2 remind you guys I do expect to see kind of labels on your x-axis here saying like what you found and what it means okay so um negative 2 which should work for this yeah because it's smaller than negative four, or is negative four <coughs> halves, yeah? yeah. So, so if you plug in negative two into our derivative, positive or negative? Uh, it is. If I plug in negative one to my derivative, One is, mm, one should be negative. And then if I plug in four, positive. Okay, so we're almost there. We've done 90% of the work. We have found the x values that are closest to the parabola. Those x values are the square, negative square root 3 halves and positive square root 3 halves. I didn't ask for the x values in this case. I asked for the point. So how can we find the y values? Plug them in. Plug them in where? Two. The y equals 4 minus x squared. So the point's on the parabola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that would be 4 and minus 3 halves, right? Because negative, positive 4 minus 3 halves is um, 5 halves, maybe? All right, so um, the rest of class, guys, I'm going to have you work on your homework packet. Period seven, work on your homework packet after this. Thanks. Bye.